Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What is happening, fifth grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. This is episode number 13. At this time, I'd like for you to go ahead and complete number one and number two on your own. That means that you should have the worksheet. If you don't have the worksheet, you should see a link below or somewhere around this video where you can download the worksheets that you need for this episode along with the other episodes in this Math FSA fifth grade boot camp series. So go ahead, try number one and number two on your own and join me to check your work. All right, welcome back everybody. So before we even get going, you know I like to identify the question type first. So I'm seeing four answer choices, which means that this should be a what kind of question? A multiple choice. Multiple choice. Boom, jot that down if you did not already. All right, let's mark up our text now. It says, which expression, an expression means that there is no equal sign. And you notice down here, we've got numbers and symbols, but we don't have an equal sign. So these are down here. Which expression is equivalent, which means equal to six ninths? Okay, this is actually a very simple question. In fact, I'm really hoping that you see one very similar to this on the FSA because watch. This division sign, all you need to know, it stands for division, okay? And you can even see, look, it kind of looks like a division symbol, right? If we had six and then nine, it kind of looks like a division symbol, six ninths, right? Another way to read this would be six divided by nine. Not nine divided by six, but six divided by nine. So the only one that says six divided by nine is C. It's not six minus nine. It's not nine minus six. And it's not nine divided by six. This would be nine sixths, which is not the same thing. So eliminate this one. Let's mark C. You just read it from top to bottom. All right, let's take a look at the next one. All right, for number two, let's identify the question type first. So I'm seeing a table, I'm seeing rows, and I'm seeing columns. So what kind of question is this? Yeah, it's a matching item question. Matching item, jot this down if you did not already. Matching item. Okay, let's go ahead and read it. It says, determine the value, that means the amount, for each scenario, that's kind of like a story, right? So these must be the stories down there. Then match the value with the correct set of consecutive numbers. So consecutive numbers. Consecutive numbers are one right after the, oops, 
So if I have the number one, the next consecutive number would be two. If I had the number two, the next consecutive number would be three. Consecutive numbers are just one number right after the other. So when we read the scenario, our answer is either gonna be between zero and one feet, between one and two feet, and between two and three feet. Okay, let's start with this one. Mr. Urkel has a board that's seven feet long. Okay, has a board that's seven feet long. He cuts, which means that he's dividing it into three equal pieces. One, two, three. One, two, three equal pieces. How many feet should each piece B. Okay, so we understand that it's division. We know the total was seven and we were dividing it by three, or we could have written it as seven divided by three. And now we have to figure out where this value is, which consecutive numbers are they between. To do that, I just use division. So three goes into seven. Three, six, nine is too much, so two times. Two times three is six subtract we get one one is our remainder and we're starting as a fraction and whenever we start as a fraction i always recommend to end as a fraction so to do that we take our remainder and we bring it up top started from the bottom now we're here on top and our denominator before was three so two and one third that means that each piece should be two and one third feet and that would be between two and three not between one and two because it's two plus a third it's between two and three so mark c all right let's take a look at the next one all right now we have eddie eddie has a board that's four feet long okay he cuts it too he cuts it into six equal pieces so three on this side and three on this side I could have made those look a little bit more equal, but that's okay. How many feet long should each piece of the board be? So our total is four feet, and he's dividing it by six. The other way that we could write that would be four in the numerator and six in our denominator. And I know that four six is not quite a whole because six sixths would be a whole, and it's less than that. So that means that it would be between zero and one feet. There we go. Let's do the final one. These are basically the same thing. So we know that Laura now has a board that's eight feet long and she cuts it into or divides it into five equal pieces. So that means she has a board that's eight feet long. We know the total that it used to be and then she cuts it, splits it, divides it into five equal pieces. Another way to write that would be eight fifths and we can divide that, we're not, I know some of you might be thinking, let's just choose the middle column, right? But we should definitely make sure first. So if I divide this, five goes into eight one time. And then when I subtract, I get three. Started from the bottom, now we're here on top. And my denominator is five. So one and three fifths is between one and two. So it definitely was H, but now I'm not just making an estimated guess. I know for sure that it's that one because I solved it out. Okay. All right. Go ahead and make any adjustments or corrections to your paper and then join me for some more helpful videos to fully master these skills. Okay. So now let me point you in the direction of some more helpful videos. First, I want you to check out the link that is for McCarthy Math 155. Check out Unit 6, Day 97. This is where we practice a whole bunch on how fractions can be used as division. McCarthy Math 155 is a high energy jam packed program that has basically one video for each day of the school year. So it is a membership, but you do get seven days for free. So I encourage you to check this out. See how you feel about it. This will definitely help you to sharpen up your skills. And teachers, if you decide that you want to become a member of McCarthy Math 155, you can also share these videos with your students. 
I walk you through how to do just that in the tutorials tab. The next link that I'm going to go ahead and provide is to my how to pass the math FSA series on YouTube. Now it's going to be for the same standard that we worked on today. Keep in mind that I created this series back when the FSA was a computer based test. So the style of questions can look a little bit different than what you're seeing in this series. The math FSA boot camp, what you're watching right now is for the current paper based test. Now the how to pass series still has great questions. I really do encourage you to check it out. And I would love for you to follow me on my social media platforms. That way you can stay in the loop with everything going on in McCarthy Math Academy. I'm on Facebook and Instagram at McCarthy Math Academy, and I'm also here on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, please smash that like button for me. It helps other students to know that this is a safe and fun place to learn and grow. Because y'all, it really does break my heart when I see students struggling with math and not getting the help that they deserve. That's why I put these videos out on YouTube. That's why I create videos is to help students, to help teachers too. So every time you smash a like button for a video that I create, it does, it helps to bring in more people to watch so that I can help them. And I really do appreciate that. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know that you were created for a reason. That's right. You are the ones that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have a whole new generation of world changers ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And I cannot wait to see you all on the next episode. Bye y'all.